Hello everybody. Uh, how is my volume? Because I don't usually stream from Windows and I had to reset up everything. Okay, just making sure it's not like abysmal before I even attempt to begin anything. Let's play some Hugo. Uh, DosGameClub.com is playing this trilogy for October. It's a fun podcast. Hello! It's a fun podcast, and I thought it would be fun to try and take back my world record speedrunning. Uh, before we even do anything like that, we're just gonna play through the game pretty normally. Game louder than me. Well, that's easy to fix. Is this any better? Okay, sorry for any ear damage I caused. Hugo is really anxious to get going here. You can see in the corner. Uh, is there anybody here who hasn't actually played these games at all? Like, ever? Just at a complete loss to what this beautiful work of art before them is? Okay, yeah, um, well, essentially what Snorb is saying, this is just a parser-based adventure game. You get to move around with arrow keys and type in what you want you to do while you're doing that. You are in front of the house where Penelope was last seen. If you were to rescue her, you must find a way inside, no matter what lies ahead. These are very well-known adventures. If you had a shareware CD with DOS games, you almost certainly had these on it. I got this on a shareware CD myself, the same one that got me a billion other DOS games and got me into all that in like the late 90s, thanks to a garage sale find. Uh, the art in this game is kind of neat, because a lot of it is just like converted clip art. I know I've seen uh, one of those like Twitter bots that just posts all the clip art on a on various like clip art CDs. I've seen this house before. And if you actually like buy the game on GOG, you get the manual and things and you'll have like the original assets in it. But our story for this game is we are Hugo. Our girlfriend Penelope took a babysitting job at this house and has yet to return. So our job is to rescue her. And when I had this as a child, my brother and I we would try it a lot, and we couldn't get past this screen. Take a look at the house. We can, you know, try and climb the fence. Hello, welcome. Try to fail miserably. Hugo is not very good at climbing. Not even that tall of a fence, either. Don't look at the moon. You'll go blind. There's a bat flying around up there, too, currently hiding. There it is. It's just flapping around up there, as one does. But your goal is to figure out how to get in the house, first and foremost. Okay, well, don't have the pumpkin. Open the door. It's locked. Climbing the window. Hugo is just not very good. He ain't much of a hero, as we'll see. He tries his best. He'll get the job done. But it's, uh, it's definitely a challenge for him to... I mean, his eyes are pretty rough. The sensitive eyes of his. Does the house give us anything different? 
It's a spooky looking house. I think you should go inside. As a kid, this was as far as we could get. We'd hear the fun little intro music, which the author... Oh, she just said it on the intro. David something. I feel bad for not having looked this up in advance now. But he said that the intro theme is the Dragnet theme before it turns into something else at the end. David Gray, that's it. Thank you, Snorp. Me and my brother would try this one a lot. Never make any progress. Eventually, we got mad at the game. And we tried some petty vandalism. And it works. Sure enough, inside the pumpkin is a key. Uh, this is a very amateurish game. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's definitely got plenty of weird decisions and things. But it, it does have some stuff that's like, um, maybe not the best, like... We can't get all the points now because we broke the pumpkin. If you pick up the pumpkin, you get points. If you pick up the pumpkin and then break it to get the key, you get all the points. There's a lot of stuff like that. Uh, apologies every time you see that. That's me pressing my mic mute button. Which thankfully doesn't actually matter for the parser. It just kind of strips out, I think, non-alphabetic characters entirely. Lucky us. But we can get our key. Unlock that door. Open that door. And the game opens up. There's a... a guy. Mad scientist type. Cool portrait of a bat. Don't look at it though, it's too scary. You're in the hall. It sounds as if a big feast or something is going on in the room on the right. There's a flight of stairs to the left. So far, your presence has gone undetected. The aesthetic of this game is pretty fantastic. Uh, let's uh, make a save here. That's a good question, because there's not really a lot you can do as far as how long it took until we decide to try and smash the pumpkin. Hello, welcome. Yeah, oh, that's another thing. This is a trilogy. I'm almost certainly only going to play the first one. I have beaten the others in the past. I don't have them nearly as memorized. And in what little bit I did of glitch, glitch hunting in them, I couldn't find anything. I'm sure there's stuff if you really try. The original game is definitely the buggiest by far. Third one is like Hugo is in a plane crash and you're in the jungle. The second one is... I like the second one, honestly. It's just kind of weird. Actually, let's uh, pop open the help menu with F1 here. We can see the instructions, toggle the sound. We can instantly recall the last command we entered, which is good if you have a small typo or something. Save, restore, view our inventory, and the boss button. So we've got our key. That's it. And our boss button is... In case you're playing Hugo, Hugo is not safe for work. Now, no one will ever know. Spreadsheets and business. I do like that the DOS box opening still shows up in it for some reason. You just exit out of this once your boss leaves. And go back to playing your games. Yeah, the series does eventually turn into Nightmare 3D which I've still actually never played whatsoever, and DOS Game Club did do that some time back. They like to do, to keep it spooky for October. But uh, let's get back over here, let's make a save. Most of these saves, I promise, don't matter much. Forget death time, I'm gonna say, Twitch. Let me explore our mansion, our mansion. It's just a house, it's not a very big house. Kitchen, backyard, dining room, which also connects to the living room. Uh, this has the beautiful witch portrait. That is the best art in the game by far. Yeah, your Frankenstein monsters and your Draculas and your lady. 
and death and your butler. Sure. I'll have a chop. Very good, sir. Here, just a moment. You're not one of us. You're a bloomin' interloper. Come here, you little blighter. I'm going to chop your head off. They don't mind you walking in, but when you ask for a chop... It appears your game is up, so to speak. The butler deftly slices your head off with a handy carving knife. So much for rescuing Penelope. Look at that. We lost our head, quite literally. All you can do at this point is restore, save, game, or quit. So this game is actually pretty short. Start actually doing some stuff in here. Check out our cool table. Small round wooden table, useful for putting things on, like candles. That's great. I haven't played this game normally in quite some time. Get the candle, get some points for it. Uh, we can look at our candle. A useful looking candle. The game will teach you words, is you have to figure out how do you describe this thing under stairs? Actually, does look under stairs work? Nope. Cubby hole does. I don't see anything much in here. Also, yes, it's uh, this is our first, well, not our first puzzle. This is our next puzzle, in which it's usually too dark. But if you have the candle, you can see that there's a pen knife and a little silver whistle. So you get ye knife. Get ye whistle. I wonder what the whistle is for. Well, I mean, only one way to find out. It discards a lot of things, and once we get into the, the speedrun aspect, we'll start really, like, shortening our commands as that becomes important. Less typing, less time. It's... It really discards a ton of stuff. Like, will this work? Oof. That's some uh, latency there. I have DOSBox running on, like, the default 3000 cycles, which is fine. Yeah, see, that it was cool with that. Blow, blah, 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 whistle. Nothing seems to happen. Maybe it's one of those dog whistles that only dogs can hear. It's our friendly dog. Oh dear. It seems the nice doggy has eaten you all up. You'll never get to rescue Penelope this way. Once again, we are dead. It's just a cruel trick. Don't blow the whistle. The, the dog is a bit of a thing of nightmares. People are not fond of the dog's graphics. Exquisitely bad work of art. I mean, it's moving. I think that's pretty good art. How about the wallpaper, though? Not very interesting. It's, it is a very charming game. Like, I genuinely like this a lot. You're in one of the upstairs bedrooms. There doesn't appear much of any interest at all in here. Check out the bed. Get down on your hands and knees and peer under the bed to find absolutely nothing. It was nice of the game to just immediately assume that's what I meant, because that was going to be my next command to look under it. And if we look outside... Pretty dark out there. You can just make out the outline of a shed below and amongst some trees. Some kind of faucets. Cabinet? Like, some stuff just doesn't really even have a description. And then you also have to figure out what some of this stuff is. Shrunken monkey head is in fact just a mask. Just really realizing now that Hugo's face has some uh, real Chris Delta Rune vibes. That perfectly neutral expression. But we won't be seeing that for very long. I mean, 
wear the mask. Look at this. Isn't this great? Hugo's got skin problems. He's got climbing problems. He's got trouble. He's got girlfriend problems right now. You've arrived at the bathroom? Yeah, he was pretty chill about this whole thing, really. Won't look at the toilet. Will you flush the toilet? How dare they. What kind of a game doesn't let you flush the toilet? Um, run the tub. Alright, alright. Nope, Hugo refuses to acknowledge. Sink. Mirror. Appears to be something daubed on the mirror in red. It looks like the number 333. Three, three. Oh, we can really see the moon out there. Pretty dark out there. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, so like if it doesn't understand things, it'll just kind of discard them. So look, moon just turned into the generic look. Yeah, the bathroom is bigger than that bedroom, actually. Kind of depressing. Oop, not restore. I want to save. We have people in here, and of course, the high frequency cosmic radiation emanating from this room knocks your mask onto the floor. You can pick it up again when you come out. Uh, this is a trilogy. There are three games in the Hugo series, and then there's Nightmare 3D, which is a first-person shooter that's this, but not this. It's what if this game was a first-person shooter? Mad Professor Speaks. Ah, there you are. Looking all over the house for you. Look, you're late and we haven't much time. Step into the box and we'll begin the experiment. Professor beckons you to step into the large cubicle in the center of the room. For some reason I got the generic message pop up. What have we got in here? We've arrived in the Mad Professor's laboratory. There's a strange looking box connected to some weird machine with flashing lights. In the left hand corner of the room is a little table with an assortment of odd shaped items on it. Oh dear, I have heard that the Nightmare 3D game is pretty difficult. Oh, didn't like my back ticks? Let's see, look box. That doesn't do anything. Right, it's because I actually had the back ticks. Yeah, there's definitely some Maniac Mansion vibes in this game, for sure. Alright, well... I mean, we're free to go, but... For science. Good, says the professor. Okay, Igor. Press the blue button. Your grumbles something incoherent and deftly presses the red button. You idiot, Igor, roars the professor. That's all I need. A colorblind imbecile for an assistant. Oh dear, I've got my headache coming on again. I've had enough hassle for one day. I'm going to have a lie down. Oop. Find the message notifications. Professor storms off, leaving you alone with Igor. Sorry to everybody who just checked their telegram. So now we're tiny. Little Hugo. So what's the deal with Igor? He has a certain charm, I suppose. The weird machine? Lots of buttons and dials and flashing lights. Please don't ask me to try and figure it out. And we are too small to reach the door handle, so we are trapped here. Igor is not good. Er, sorry, Igor is good at taking orders, but is not much of a conversationalist. Hmm. You gotta walk there, apparently. 
But in our tiny state, we can easily get behind this glass door. And you can actually get behind this while you're big. It's just really picky, and it is kind of difficult to get back out, especially. But if we check out our table here, the only thing you recognize is a useful-looking rubber bung. Thank you, David Gray, for teaching me the word bung. The actual word. The intended use of the word bung. Okay, we have a bung. But we're still very tiny. Gore. Help me. Igor. Press. The yellow button. Ah, well, he listens to me. There we go. Now we're big again. But we're also a little discombobulated. A little bit confused here. Good enough though, right? No? Too bad. In your current state, you can't coordinate your hand to turn the door handle. You're just... playing some roundabout. All we know is how to spin. Okay, Igor, press blue button. So it doesn't actually matter what color. It goes in like a set order. You can just say Igor, press button. This seems worse, actually. Like, this is some body horror. Not a fan of this. And we can't grip the door handle with our terrifying, half-missing body. Igor, please. No. Still won't listen. Okay. We are back to normal. Now let's never go here again. Once we find the door hitbox, at least. We did drop our mask, so let's pick that up again. Let's put that on to hide ourselves from the world. And if you've ever wondered why there's that weird mask thing, I mean, you can probably guess if you think about it a bit, but we'll see eventually. Like, you'll kind of get a feel for how this game is coded and why it will not let you have a mask in there. Yeah. Listen, it's very easy to wear a mask, it turns out. Let's save here. What do we got? What's our inventory right now? F6. Our key, knife, mask, candle, whistle, bung. We got, you know, a collection of things. Okay, well, let's, uh... Not invited to the dinner table. That's kind of rude. Let's talk to Dracula. Mm, none of them want to talk either. Talk with death. Okay, fine, fine. So this butler kind of paces a bit, but eventually he'll start, like, hunting you down. It's easy enough to get him caught on furniture, but... Alright, let's try this again. Yes. Uh, if you say no, I don't think he ever offers you a chop again, and so your game just becomes unwinnable. It's not so much timing, so much as sometimes the game kind of gives you these special prompts, like the asking for a chop, and if you type other things, it kind of like exits that mode, and it gets weird. But okay, now we have a juicy looking chop. Look chop. Rather yummy looking pork chop. We looked at our other stuff, what's our knife looking like? Rather useful. A bung. Sort of round and rubbery. No, we're wearing it. Here's to be a Halloween mask looking somewhat like a grotesque monkey's head. Mm. 
Can't look at ourselves. Uh, check out the glasses, maybe. Painting. It is Zelda, Wicked Witch of the West. The base. It's pretty, but useless. Entire chat begins saying same. And kitchen is where things start getting a little low on ideas. There's nothing you can actually do here. See the usual shed outside. Here inside, nothing to write home about. The oven. Like literally everything just says, oh, peering inside. Get room. We're gonna do some sweeping, are we? Hey, the room must be gripped by some magical power. So despite your best efforts, you can't budge it. More games need to do this. Yeah, if you had a shareware disc or CD, you probably ran into this game at some point. Head out here. It's a very messy looking yard. You're behind the house now, in what appears to be a small fenced-in yard. To the rear of the garden is a little shed. I'm not really getting garden vibes. That's an oak tree, sure. Let's climb it. You shinny, you shinny up the tree. I find lots of branches and leaves and stuff, and shinny down again. Good exercise, huh? So now Hugo is, like, an extremely capable climber, actually. Must be his mask. You're also, like, penned in by the path. You can't actually... You have to keep off the grass. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm to climb the fence now. Nope, see? It's just really hard to climb that fence, apparently. Shed door is locked with a combination lock. What's the combination? You can probably guess. It's 333, as helpfully written on the mirror. Door opens. Just kind of say hello. Can we look at the shed. Shed seems to have fallen into disuse and is pretty much full of garbage, either broken or rusted to pieces. You are just on the just on the point of leaving when you notice an oil can sitting on a shelf. Get oil can. Okay. We've only got one room left in the house. And here's our dog again. Who is just as terrifying as ever. Kills us and eats our mask, apparently. So thankfully, thanks to the power of a parser, we can just type our command in advance. Throw you chop. That'll distract him. Seems to have caught the dog's attention. Looks like he's going to be rather busy for a while. Come on. Let me pet the dog. Won't let you pet the dog. This is another... Relic. The era. Where are we? Pretty empty looking room adjoining the kitchen. The only thing of any interest that immediately catches your eye is a rather large and ugly looking dog. Which jerk. Well, you can't really see it with where the dog parked himself, but there is a mouse hole here. You rummage around the hole and feel something soft and slightly moist. 
Phew, a medium-sized pile of mouse droppings. Wonderful. Get droppings. For goodness sakes, give me a break. I suppose this is a good time to do the classic parser test. Same to you, loser. Boring wall. Boring light. Boring rug. Not much here. But there's not really any other options. So it just so happens. I'm actually just noticing now that the right side of the rug is a little, like, off in the pattern compared to the rest. Sure enough, a secret trap door. Okay, that was not helpful. Open trap door. Here's to be bolted shut. Then we got our, our next of this game's limited number of puzzles. To oil. The bolts. And then we can undo the bolts. And then we can open the trapdoor. And then we throw away our mask, because who needs it? And even though it like opens up and there's a little staircase there, it teleports you. Like if you're wandering around the room, you'll just be taken to this basement. And you know, as a child, this was as far as me and my brother could get. We eventually managed to make it into the basement. We are below the house now. The walls appear to be partly hewn out of rock. To the right of the basement is a large, extremely heavy looking door. You can hear the muffled sounds of someone sobbing. Open the door. Are you kidding? Well, I suppose you had to try. Needless to say, the door is locked. Looking through the door, you can make out your beloved Penelope's tear streaked face. Uh, the lab got us a bung, which as a kid, me and my brother did not ever figure out you could get. Yeah, so there's not much down here other than some big old rocks. Examine every rock in minute detail and come up with zilch. And this was just where the game ended when I was a kid. Made even more awkward by the fact that okay, you actually can't like shinny your way up, but if you're not like mashing the keys, you can't actually go back upstairs. So sure enough, solution, as I found out years later on GameFAQs, was that there's a secret passage between the rocks. Let's actually make our basement save. And into a bat cave. We are immediately assaulted by bats. Who get get poor Hugo. Oh dear, we seem to have wandered a bit too close to one of the vampire bats. Looks like it's curtains for you. Now you'll never be able to rescue Penelope. Once again, Hugo is dead with his rock colored hair. But now blow the whistle. Seems to have a strange effect on the bats. And they kind of just... What do you know? You appear to have confused the bats' sense of direction. It must be something to do with their sonar-like hearing. And now they just kind of... linger. They can still kill you. Don't touch them still, but... Anyways, now for the real scary part. The mummy. If you actually like look at guys for this game, they all have this like these diagrams and things of how to position the mummy because the mummy is very fast, as you can see. And he kind of just got again caught on the rocks. I don't know if he's actually caught, so I might die here. Oh no, yeah, he'd be he'd be hunting me down by now. Oh yeah, actually take a look here. 
You're in a cave with the mummy's tomb. Treasure? A small fortune in gold. Get that gold. So the nice thing is there are at least a few aliases for items and things. You can just say, like, knife instead of pen knife. Uh, you can say cork instead of bung. Gold instead of treasure. Stuff like that. And the back of the tomb. Here we are. The lake. And believe it or not, we are actually pretty close to done with this game. But here are our toughest puzzles yet. Looks like a serviceable boat. I wonder whether it would get you to the other side. Okay, I want to look at the whole, like, area. There we go. I was too close to the boat. You are now in a large open cavern. There's a small underground lake here, at the far side of which is some sort of jetty and a very old-looking man who appears to be just sitting on the jetty fishing. To the far right, at the back of the cavern, you can see a tunnel. So we got this cool boat. Let's get in. I that the boat has a hole in the bottom. It just said it was perfectly serviceable. Like, I thought right now I was going to show off you, like, capsizing and dying, but no. It's just the perfectly serviceable boat is very clearly not. So, boat has a hole in the bottom. Unless you can plug it with something, this boat will surely sink before you get to the other shore. That's right, we are going to bungy boat. Bug hole. With bung. Let's bung that hole. Get in. It's Hugo, chilling in the boat. Of course, we are still tied to the shore. Rope stop the boat drifting away. Lucky we have our trusty pen knife. Cut the rope. Boat is now floating free. Loading free! Loading free! Push boat. And then this, you just get to watch this Hugo's excellent seamanship. This old man is just... Hello. Leave boat. Exit boat. Get out of boat. There's an old man in the way. Look, old man. I want out of the boat. Just looking at the boat again. Look, old man. Really? I think as I said boat in that sentence. He looks at least 200 years old. Push, old man. Whoop. Old man pushed back. Now we get to do this again. I didn't know you could... Hugo has seen... Well, I mean, he did just meet, like, Count Dracula. Dracula's been around for a little bit. Okay, let's... Try diplomacy. The old man seems about to speak. Ah, welcome to my lake, my fine young friend. I have been waiting for you. I am well aware of your quest, and I would hasten you on your way. However, before I let you pass, I must satisfy myself that you have the experience to handle the dangers that lurk through yonder passage. To this end, you will permit me to test your mettle with a few questions the answers to which would come readily to the lips of any seasoned adventurer. Be warned, however, that I can only accept your first answer. The old man clears his throat and asks, What was the first name of the hero in The Hobbit? People who haven't played this game and thus aren't familiar with this part. Do y'all know, know any of these answers? Who was the hero in The Hobbit? Yes. Sign out of things. Alright. We got us a Bilbo. Correct. And the next question is, 
Where did Aslan live? Hints, not in a lore trope. Now, had I gotten here as a child, I wouldn't have even known Bilbo. I would not have known Narnia either. Uh, if you get it wrong, that's actually a good idea. Wardrobe. That is incorrect. Since you have failed to answer my questions, I hereby doom you to float forever on my lake. You don't die, you just float forever on the lake. Except I'm pretty sure you can just talk to him again. Yeah. But we do have to rebuild, though. Hello, welcome. Just in time for everybody's favorite part of Hugo, the trivia. Okay. So, as was said, we got Narnia. The next question is... Who invented Count Dracula? There's a chance I would have known this as a child. His mom. I mean, I suppose that's accurate. Alright, got us a Bram Stoker. Correct! And the next question is... What should you do with a pan-galactic gargle blaster? Ride it, fire it, drink it, or run away from it? Uh, I suspect that numerous people will know this one for sure. Actually, D is probably the correct choice, but... Oh no, we gotta drink it. Now for another skilled adventurer. What's the name of the only mammal that can't fly that can fly? I mean, it's meant to be consumed. You gotta drink it. Y'all are struggling with this one. All right, all right. It's our man. Two more to go. <laughs> what was the name of Roy Rogers' dog? This would have uh, absolutely destroyed me as a child to be asked this question. I like Roy Doggers, actually. Bilbo. Did I spell it wrong, or is that incorrect? But I also always have two things in mind for that question. Okay. Drink it. Man. Yes. His horse was trigger, of course. His dog is bullet. That's a fun uh, pairing. And lastly, did you register the shareware? That's my timer shortcut. Good enough. Wonderful. Thou art truly a noble and wise adventurer. Go in peace, my friend, and good luck in thy mission. Leave boat. Exit boat. Get out of boat, please. Okay. Here goes. Going bald. One sixty seven points out of one ninety.
Goodbye, old man. Try walking there. And lastly, we get this friends. You've arrived in a passage with a room at the end. There's a large guard at the end who appears to be standing just appears to be standing outside a kind of jail. Wait. Behind the guards you can make out a familiar shape. Yes, it's Penelope being held prisoner. Doesn't understand you. Can't punch the guard. What do we got? We got a knife. Stab guard. Ask guard about clothes. Look at guards. This is one dude you don't want to argue with. Argue with guard. Alert guard. Nothing fun here. Ah, low whistle. Okay. Nothing seems to happen. Fortunately for us, the whistle doesn't work in the basement. Oil guard. Yeah, actually, nothing seems to be oilable. Alas, there's only one thing we can do. Give guard all the treasure. You hand over one coin from your little bag of golden coins. He makes a gruff noise, which you assume was a thank you, and steps aside, allowing you to pass. Nearly there, Hugo! Here we are, with 188 out of 190 points, because we didn't pick up the pumpkin before we broke the pumpkin. What's that stray dot there? I've never noticed that. There's just one black pixel. Alright. He goes very excited. Congratulations! That's Penelope's silhouette. You're so glad to have rescued Penelope. You dance for joy! After cutting her ropes with your penknife, you open the bolts of the jail door and find yourself back in the basement. From here, you trip hand in hand up the basement stairs, past the ferocious doggy, through the kitchen, and out the front door to freedom, and live happily ever after. Goodbye! That's a lovely wedding photo. Thank you for playing! Don't forget to register to obtain your free Hugo's House of Horrors hymn booklet, free Hugo's House of Horrors self-running version, free unregistered Hugo 2 Who Done It. That will be $20 plus $4 shipping and handling. There's a 1-800 number. And that's Hugo. It's a very simple puzzle game, but it's a lot. It's a lot of fun, honestly. Uh, when I was also playing this as a child, we were playing off a of shareware CD, and we didn't really understand computers that much, so we couldn't save because it would obviously it would try to save to the CD's directory. We didn't know how to like copy things off a CD, so we always had to play it in one sitting and. Since the game's so short, we really didn't mind, which is honestly kind of a positive aspect in a weird way. Like, it's a short little game, and it's just a lot of fun. It's got a ton of charm to it. The sequels are even goofier than this. But of course, as one does, I eventually ended up... So essentially, yes, it was permadeath, because we had to restart every time. But, at some point... In like 2018 or so, I was messing around with other DOS games, ZZT, which many of the people in the chat are familiar with from my regular channel of Worlds of ZZT. I was converting this game to ZZT to showcase a fun glitch in ZZT that let you kind of fake a text parser, so to speak. That's a told lengthy story we're not going to get into. But, in the process of that, I had to play a bunch of Hugo to look at how things react and reference the boards to redraw art and stuff. And I kind of realized that the game is a little buggy. And that got me thinking, 
I wonder if anybody's ever done a speedrun of this game. And so I looked on YouTube, and there were like two. And neither of them were super serious attempts. They were just like, I'm going to speedrun Hugo's House of Horrors. It'll be funny. But I was, after watching those, I was like, wait a second. Because, surprisingly, this game does not have a thriving speedrun community, I'm like, I could beat that world record. And so I did. And then uh, a year ago, somebody went in and beat my record, which took the, from like a minute and 59 seconds to a minute and 49 seconds. And so I figured this would be a good as time as any to try and take that record back. So I will be back in a moment, and then we will start trying to fly through this game a bit. So, BRB.